All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, nice to see all you guys here. Thank you for coming. Um, I don't know if you guys can see on the live stream, but Eunice is here um, to help help with us a little bit. Um, so if you guys don't know Eunice, uh, she used to play piano and she used to sing. Uh, I would I would like uh, I loved it when she used to play because she would also sing as well and she would kind of cover up my voice uh, and uh, fill up my insecurities. But now she's here, she can sing and she can uh, we can all praise the Lord together. Um, but also. Um, so, and also I want to say one thing, um, if you guys are available to help uh, set up the um, tents in the mornings, that'd be awesome. Uh, we still need a lot of help. A lot of people have been coming a little late, um, but you know, the more the help, uh, if, if you guys don't feel comfortable staying in for the service, you could just help out and then uh, go home, but um, we really appreciate it. Um, but besides that, let me pray and get started. Um, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for uh, bringing us here together um, on, a, on a good weather. Um, really just um, uh, uh, really just be with um, uh, the video message, Lord. Help it run smoothly with no problems. Um, really just um, be with us as we praise you and worship you and help us realize that um, when we repent and uh, when we repent, we have um, a Christ living in us, Lord. Um, really uh, thank you for being um in this presence, Lord, and she's saying I pray, amen. Uh, can we all stand? I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash I'm born again Forever safe in the Savior's hands and You are more than my words can say And I know you go for all my days I fix my eyes following your ways Forever free in unending grace Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher Wish you higher, your love, your love, your love, never ending, oh, oh, oh. You are alive in us, nothing can take your place. You are alone, we need your love has set us free, oh, oh. In the midst of the darkest nights, the set your love be the shining light, breaking chains that were holding me. You sent your sun that you set me free, and everything of this world will fade. I'm pressing on till I see your face, and I will live that your will be done. And I will stop till your kingdom. You are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love never ending. Oh, oh, oh. You are my life in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. One more last time. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. Whoa. His wounds, his hands, his feet, my 
my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in Taking my 
my sin, my cross, my shame Rising again, I bless your name You are my all in all When I fall down, you pick me up When I am dry, you fill my cup You are my all in all To give up, I'll be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Father, Lord, we thank you so much again uh, for bringing us here to worship you and to praise you, Lord. Uh, really just uh, thank you for being our all in all. Help us um, to really um, center our, our life uh, with you, Lord. Um, uh, give us direction for this new year, Lord, and uh, really be with the service. Um, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning. I, I want to welcome everybody to our Sunday worship service today. Um, so today we have a very special worship service uh, because we're going to listen to a message from our UBF director, Pastor Moses Yoon. Uh, it comes from Colossians, and it's a very important passage, and I believe a very important message as well. Okay, so before we begin, there's a few announcements. Actually, just one announcement, uh, mainly. Uh, that is next week, we're going to begin uh, Bible studies and messages from the book of 1 Kings. So that begins next Sunday's worship service uh, with uh, next Sunday's worship service. And the first messenger is William Larson, so please... Pray for him and pray for our uh, study of the book of First Kings. Okay, um, and so now we're going to have prayer uh, from Bill Hosh, and this is going to be recorded. So let's pray together with Bill. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, I thank you for the forgiveness of sin that's in Jesus Christ. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for pastors and leaders. I thank you for the men's Bible study. I thank you for the new book, uh, First Kings, we'll be studying in the life of Solomon. 
Thank you for providing food and protection for us, Lord. Father, last week we uh, uh, we were faced with the challenge, uh, seeing that all these things will disappear. What manner of people ought we to be? Oh, Father, how do you make us to be looking for your return? How do you do this, Father? Uh, I pray that you'd give us power to live a holy and godly life in a world that's passing away, Lord. And, uh, and Father, we know that uh, when we have this hope of seeing you, that, uh, that this is a hope that purifies us, even as you are pure. And Father, I pray that we would look, look forward to that coming when you break the continuity of nature, even though the skeptics of this world say you'll never come again, we believe you will, Lord, and I pray that you'd bless it like you did when you worked suddenly at the time of the flood, and you worked suddenly at the time of creation, and even in judging Sodom and Gomorrah, you came suddenly, Lord, and we believe you're gonna come suddenly again, Lord. Purify our hearts, Lord. And as we ask, Lord, the question, Lord, what are you doing in the world? We know, Father, that you're about building your kingdom, and it's happening brick by brick, Lord, around the world and I pray Father that you'd show us the place to participate in what you're doing Lord we want to make sure uh, our necks are in your yoke and not a yoke of our own making Lord so have mercy on us Lord uh, show us what your plan is Lord we pray Father I pray for a nation I pray you'd behold our leaders Lord that uh, we have great political division in our country Father uh, there's, uh, uh, it seems like people are incapable of talking to other people. We pray your mercy upon us as a people. We pray, Father, for you put a restlessness in our youth, our young people, that they would be restless to see the power of God move in their lives, Lord. We pray, Father, for uh, our president, our state and local leaders, our military, our police, our fire, emergency personnel, medical people, Father, have mercy on us and have mercy on our leaders that, that help us, Lord. And we pray that uh, you'd restrain them from evil in all their decisions and actually constrain them to doing good, Lord. We pray that you'd end abortion in our land. We pray you'd stop the flow of blood uh, from these little ones, Lord. And uh, Father, we pray for leadership in the COVID crisis right now. Uh, we pray we'd have leadership according to truth and not according to politics, Lord. We pray for protection of the aged and the infirm, Lord. We pray that uh, uh, for leadership, Lord. And we pray that, uh, Father, for my brothers and sisters, that we would have faith in God, that you'd make us to be people of prayer, people of the book. Father, our children, are, uh, we see them like, uh, like lambs before the wolves in many ways uh, in this present world. I pray that you'd use us to be a blessing to them, Lord. And I pray you'd make them to be overcomers by faith, Lord. By faith, you'd make them to be overcomers of the world, Lord. Uh, Father, I pray you'd make us equal to the challenge of uh, First Timothy to preach and to be ready uh, when we feel like it and when we don't to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with great patience. And Father, we pray that uh, we would receive Pastor Moses Yoon's Bible message today. And I pray that the scriptures would be received by us, Lord, not as if they were the word of men, but the word of God. And I pray you'd show us how to respond when we do, Lord. And I pray, Father, that in this worship time, that we would take our eyes off of self right now, Lord, and that we would worship you because you're worthy. Please touch each of us personally, in a way that leads us to greater obedience by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for your prayer, Bill. Um, and now we're going to have Bible reading. Uh, comes from Coloss Colossians uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Okay, I'll read the passage, so please follow along. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, 
then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge in knowledge in the image of its creator here there is no gentile or jew circumcised or uncircumcised barbarian Scythian, slave or free but christ is all and is in all therefore as god's chosen people holy and dearly loved clothe yourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience bear with each other and forgive one another if you have if if any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And now we're going to listen to the recorded message from Pastor Moses Yoon. So uh, please enjoy the message today. Uh, if you're here I'm in person, um, make sure you're someplace you can see the screen. Okay, so we're going to have the message now. Hello. The title of 2021 New Year message is Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. The passage is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. And the key verse is from chapter 3, 16. Let me read. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God. Let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love that you sent your son Jesus for our sins. Thank you for all your grace upon us in the year 2020. Now may you grant us the spirit of humility and understanding so that we may receive one word from this passage in our hearts. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Colossians is an epistle by Apostle Paul to the church in Colossus which was in Asia Minor. This letter was sent around 62 AD. The main theme of the letter was about who Christ was. Among the four chapters in total, the first and second chapters are a doctrinal section on Christology that Christ is the supreme Lord of all things. The third and fourth chapters are applications that talk about a principle for how believers of Christ should live. We are faced with a new year in the midst of an unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic. How should we live in the new year? How can we serve the work of God? Through this passage, may God grant us a clear spiritual Direction. Amen. Now, let us look at verse 1. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Since then you have been raised with Christ. 
set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. This verse is linked from the previous section, Colossians 2, 13, which says, When you are dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. We are born in this world spiritually dead in our transgressions and sins. We are separated from God and we could not come to him. However, through Jesus' death and resurrection, God raised us from the dead. Of course, that he raised us does not refer to our bodily resurrection, but the spiritual resurrection. When we believe in Jesus' death and resurrection, that is the gospel. Through our faith, God gives us new life. The source of this life is Jesus. Just as a branch is attached to a tree, our life is rooted, our life is rooted in Jesus. Our life is united with the life of Christ. How grateful should we be that we were raised with Christ? How wonderful it is that our life is united with that of Christ. Now, how should we live as those who are raised with Christ? Verse 1 be said, set your heart on things above. Set your heart on things above. In the past, when we were spiritually dead, we had no idea about the things above. We just thought the visible earthly world was all there was. And that is all we lived for. Yet we came to know that there are things above. In that heavenly realm, Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Having subdued all his enemies, Christ now holds all power and authority in his hand, crowned with glory and heavenly blessings. Therefore, as a people of Christ, we should not set our heart on earthly things, but on things above. For the Colossian believers at the time, earthly things did not just mean worldly passions, pleasures, and material things. It also meant religious things. Many of the believers in Colossus pursued angel worship, fasting, and legalistic lives. They appeared spiritual, but such things were also earthly things because they, through them, in fact, pursued human glory, religious esteem, and self-satisfaction. Instead of pursuing these earthly things, we must put our hope in heaven and seek things above as heavenly citizens on earth. Verse 3 says, For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. The phrase, you died here, means that our old self is dead. When did we die? Romans 6, 6 a says, For we know that our old self was crucified with Christ, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. Our old self was crucified with Christ, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. When Jesus was crucified, we too were crucified with him. Our old self died with Jesus and was buried with him. When he was resurrected, we are also resurrected, and now we live a new life. Verse 3 says, For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Our new life is united with Christ, and is hidden in God. Wow, this is amazing. 
isn't it? Whatever is hidden in God is absolutely, absolutely safe. No, no matter how our enemy, the devil, is desperate to find and destroy our lives, he cannot do it because there is no one stronger than our God. Even though we live on earth, our true life is united with Christ and is hidden safely in God. How assuring and comforting this is. We are sojourners in this world. We are pilgrims. When our earthly life ends, we return to God where our true life is hidden. When Christ, who is our life, appears, we also will appear with him in glory. At that time, the process of sanctification will be over and will be transformed into the image of Christ and will shine like the sun. I pray that we may continue in this hope and seek things above. Amen. In order to seek things above, what then should we do? First, we should put off our old self and we should put on the new self. Look at verse 5. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, and five things, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. The phrase your earthly nature, the phrase your earthly nature refers to our old self that has the fallen Adamic nature. When we are born again, our old self died with Christ. But as long as we live in the flesh, in our body, we are still under the influence of the old self. It is like a snake of whose head is, was crushed, yet whose body is still wriggling. While living in the flesh, we, as those who have a new life, should continue to put to death the habits of the old self and imitate Christ. When our old self was alive in the past, it was impossible for us to mortify, to kill our old nature and grow in the image of Christ. This was because our old self was too powerful, too strong. But now, since our old self was crushed through the resurrection of Christ, it is no longer powerful as in the past. If we rely on God and fight, we can win the battle. This is what Romans 6.14 says, For sin shall no longer be your master. Because we are not under the law, but under grace. Grace is our master, not the law. We are the, what are the things of the earthly nature in us that we should put to death? Look at verse 5 v again. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Our earthly nature is primarily sexual corruption and excessive desire for money. Our old nature tends to be sensual and lustful. We need to kill off these desires. The ending part of verse 5 talks a little more about greed. It says greed, which is idolatry. Greed refers to the desire to have more of something, especially money. People love money and even put it in God's place. And in that sense, greed is idolatry. When we lived as unbelievers, we walked in the greed of the old self. At the time, we did not even know that this was wrong. But now, since we have been raised with Christ and have new life, we must put off our old self. While verse 5 talks about the nature of sin in our heart, the five kinds, verses 8 and 9 talk about the outward manifestation, outward expression of the sinful nature. Look at verses 8 and 9. But now you must also rid yourselves 
of all such things as this. Again, five kinds. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices. Anger, rage, and slander are the same as murder. We should put off this as we do our dirty clothes. Lying means to intentionally deceive others. Lies are a common vice in an unbelieving society, and even believers tend to take it lightly. But lies come from the devil, the father of lies, and God hates it all more than any other evil. We often think that we don't lie. I don't lie. But as the prophet Jeremiah said, our hearts are corrupt and deceitful above all things. Whenever we open our mouth, we lie. For example, to exaggerate is to lie. When we show off, we magnify our strong point, and we don't talk about others' good points. People talk long about others' mistakes while they hardly talk about their own shortcomings. All of this is lying. You should always repent of our corrupt self and cast out lies. Now look at verse 10. And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge, in the image of its creator. We already have put on the new self. And it is being renewed in knowledge, in the image of its creator. Our new life, new self is being renewed in knowledge, in the image of its creator. By putting on the new self, by put, putting on the new self, we are blessed to come to know him. To know God means to have eternal life. And by knowing him, we become like him. Amazing. By knowing him, we become like him. And as we become like him, we come to have the same divine character as him. Wow. We come to have the same divine character. And thereby, we gain an even deeper knowledge of him. This knowledge is not speculative. It is a living knowledge, and that's working effectively in our real lives. When God gives us new life, what happens? He activates our spiritual senses, activates our spiritual senses, and enables us to have living and spiritual knowledge. He also renews our will so that we may be strongly drawn to the things that please God. God makes us holy by constantly renewing our knowledge and will. He restores the image of God in us and brings us into the blessed fellowship of the Holy Trian God through our union with Christ. This is the purpose for which God created us and also saved us. There is no discrimination, Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarians, Syrians, slave or free. Christ unifies all things. Christ is the Lord of all and in all. Now, what happened? The one, what then should we put on? What should we put on? Look at verse 12. Therefore, as God's, and cho God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with, again, five kinds, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. As verse 10 says, we have already put on the new self, and God accepts us as righteous. However, this righteousness is like a wearing a robe prepared to enter a wedding ceremony. Now, the inner person, inner person must be renewed for the robe to fit. This means to receive a new heart 
and the new spirit from God to receive a new knowledge, new character, and new desire from God. Practically speaking, we must become a people of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. As members of Christ, we should bear with each other and forgive as the Lord forgave us. Let's move to verse 14. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Here, love is agape or agape, which refers to God's unconditional love. The supreme ethic of believers is this agape love. Love is the fulfillment of the law. You never get tired, no matter how much or how hard you may work for the one you love. Rather, you become full of joy. Those who love others, of course, never do anything harmful. Rather, with love, they constantly do good things for others. This love is a bond that unites the community of believers, just as a garment is kept neat with a belt. Look at verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, says members of one body you are called to peace, and be thankful. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you are called to peace, and be thankful. Christ became a peace offering between God and sinners like us, who lived in enmity with God. Thus, God in Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the peace of God. This peace is a profound one from heaven, which is not the same as the world gives. It is peace that comes from a deep assurance, deep assurance that we have already received forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. Oh, I have already received, secured forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. It is peace that cannot be taken away, even though we may lose everything in the world. We must ensure this peace is the greatest influence that controls our inner person. But in reality, it is never easy to let the peace of Christ always rule in our hearts. Due to the pandemic, one missionary did not earn enough money. With his uh, meager income, the small income, he calculated his spendings, essential spendings, and found that only $200 was left, uh, left for him. He and his family, he and his family had to survive a month with that sum, $200. When he thought about his future, it was quite certain that he could, not, he could not afford the rent and would be, his whole family would be, would be thrown out on the street. He was attacked by serious anxiety. He could not let the peace of Christ rule in his heart. This is an understandable situation. How could he rule his heart with the peace of Christ? How? He needs power, the power that comes from the grace of God, the power that comes from prayer and faith in God. Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. If our hearts are not ruled by peace, we must repent and pray. We should hold on to the word of God's promise and believe. 
If we still do not have faith, we have to persistently pray to God to help our faith. Lord, give me faith. Help my faith. Then God will surely guard our heart and our mind with his peace. Also, God will surely solve all our problems. Now look at verse 16, today's key verse. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God. The phrase, the word of Christ, refers to the scriptures, which is the Bible. The Bible is the word of God that bears witness to Christ. The new life as believers we now live is a life in which the word of God should dwell richly. When the word dwells in us richly, we can teach and admonish one another with God's word. We'll be able to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs that come from the word of God. We'll be able to praise God with gratitude in our hearts. And as you can see in verse 17, and whatever we do, whether in word or deed, we'll be able to do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We have many problems in this pandemic era. A missionary says that she feels limited raising disciples. In the past, when she um, taught a student through one-to-one -one Bible studies, she used to spend three or four hours at a time. She listened to the Bible student for hours and taught the word deeply. However, it has become almost impossible to have a long, lengthy, one-to-one -one Bible study because it is done through video calls. The Bible student just hang up if they don't like it or if something happens. It seems impossible to raise disciples through video calls. One tour guide missionary says that these days his income is literally zero. He cannot find a way to support himself. Others say that they were locked up and couldn't leave the house at all for the last four months, which made them mentally depressed. Still others confess that they have become spiritually lazy as they watch the too much news and movies on YouTube. Some say that their house is too small to have a quiet space to pray in. Indeed, there are many challenges due to the pandemic. In these times of trial, we must let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. You may ask, what does letting the word of God dwell in my heart richly have to do with my bread problem? How can it actually help the situation where we are not able to raise disciples? The truth is that the word of God matters to our practical issues. It is because God gives us the bread and God raises disciples. Psalm 34, 10 says, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Even the lions, powerful lions, may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. David in the Old Testament was chased after by Saul, who was determined to kill him. David had to gather troops, craft strategies, and fight against Saul. But at the time, what did David do? Psalm 109, 23 said, Though rulers sit together and slander me, your servant will meditate on your decrees. Rulers are powerful people. When they sit down together to slander me, I must do something quickly to fight back, otherwise I'll be in trouble. But David said, I will meditate on your decrees.
Also, Psalm 109.97 says, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. It sounds unreasonable, ridiculous to meditate on God's word all day. In times of trial, rather than seek realistic solutions. However, David meditates on the word of God all day long. At the time, God himself defeated those who were against David. We can say that the word of Christ dwelling in us richly is the same as being filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And if you look at the following verses 19 and 20, Ephesians 5.18, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. That's 18. And if you look at 19 and 20, it says, Speak to one another with the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is almost the same and as, as you teach and admonish for one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God as written in Colossians 3.16. Almost the same. Being filled with the Holy Spirit means being filled with God's word. Even though we, each of us faces different challenges, what we must do is to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly and be filled with the Holy Spirit. The word of God is living and active. God's word has a dynamic power. It is sharper than a double-edged sword. It penetrate even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thought and attitude of our hearts. The word of God reveals all our problems and gives us his wisdom. In addition, God himself leads us to follow his wisdom and overcome all our problems. Amen. Also, we learned from this passage that we must do several things. We must set our heart on things above. We must put to death whatever belongs to our earthly nature. We must rid ourselves of all sinful things. We must not lie to each other. We must put on the new self. We must bear with each other, forgive, love, let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, and so on. When we hear all these commands, honestly, it is burdensome because we know that we cannot to all these things. We know that God's commands are right, yes, yet they feel, we feel burdened because we cannot fully obey them. We feel burdened by God as it seems to make too many demands. However, God does not just give us commands and judges us if we fail. God commands us and also he enables us he enables us to obey the command. How? Through his word. God himself enables us to obey his command. The Holy Spirit works in us through the word and helps us to keep his command by God's power. Not our power. Therefore, our job is to let the word of God dwell in us richly when we receive the word not just with our head but with our heart and with our spirit and hold on to it God himself helps us through the word planted in our hearts he provides us with desire and his great power so that we can keep all his commands loving the word is the same as loving God God will surely help us with our practical issues as we continue to love the world and let it dwell in us richly in times of difficulties. Amen. Also, 
even though our present difficulties may not get better right away. What a great privilege it is for us to become those who are filled with the word of God. I believe that God is pleased with such a person of the word of Christ. A man of God is one in whom the word of God rules even his thought, wishes, and deep inclinations. Not only during the pandemic, but also at all times. The times that coronavirus are gone will surely come. Yet worries, anxieties, fears, and temptations of sin always work in our hearts. If we just try to fight and defeat them on our own, we can never win. We should not focus on driving them out. Instead, we must struggle to let the word of God dwell in us richly. When the word dwells in us richly, worries, anxieties, and worldly thoughts lose their place to stand within us. They get pushed out. I pray that the more difficult the times may become, the more we may love God's word. May we read and deeply meditate on the word. There are tremendous blessings in meditating on the word of God. One of the best ways to meditate on the word is to recite, to recite it in a low voice. It means to memorize the word by muttering it, muttering it at least 20 or 30 or even 40, 50 times. In this way, we can meditate deeply. Heaven and earth will disappear but God's word, even the smallest letter of the world, will remain unchanged forever. I pray that we may eat, drink, breathe, swim in God's precious word. I pray that we may receive the word with our minds and with our hearts and entrust ourselves to the word so that the word may transform us day by day. Amen. During this uh, pandemic, I have uh, striven, struggled to read and recite the word of God. In the early hours of the day, in the morning, through daily bread, I have meditated on the word of God. I've read through the scriptures again. When I prepared Bible study for English leaders, I read the passage afresh several times. The fresh approach to the passage with a prayerful heart led me into deeper understanding of the passage. Above all, I took out my Bible memorization card that I had already memorized. And from my daily bread notes of the past five years, I selected the key verses of each day into cards to memorize them. Whenever I had time, I spent a couple of hours a day reciting the word. Over the past eight months, I have again memorized about 3,000 Bible verses. As the word became rich in my heart, in every situation, the word came to my mind, and I started thinking based on God's word. Amid many challenges and trials, heavenly joy overflowed in my heart. God gave me his wisdom every time I needed through his word. God renewed my spiritual desire and helped me to restore my early morning prayer. In the past, praying for five minutes seemed like an hour to me. But these days, praying for an hour seems like five minutes. He gave me the joy of meditating on the word and the joy of praying. Indeed, the word of God is the source of all blessings. It gives us wisdom and strength, transforming our character and granting us power in all circumstances. So this is a confession that comes from my heart. Your promises have been thoroughly tested. Son and your servant loves them. Your promises have been thoroughly tested. Your servant loves them. In conclusion, 
God knows everything and rules of everything. When you look at our reality, anxiety, worry, fear, and despair come to us. Yet amid this trial, God wants us to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. He wants us to live by faith in his promises with thankfulness. In the new year 2021, may each of us and our communities fervently read and meditate on the word. May God help us to commit ourselves to deep Bible study. May God bless us to be devoted also to prayer and to striving for the mission of making disciples on campuses worldwide. Amen. Uh, let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your precious life-giving word. In the new year, may God help us to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. May each of us grow into a man and woman of God's word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank God. Oh, testing. Okay. Praise God for a powerful message. Um, and we're going to uh, sing a hymn song. So please stand. Now we're going to have the closing announcements and prayer topics from Pastor John.
Good morning. Did you enjoy Pastor Moses' message? Wow, when I listened to his message, I was so impressed by his example. So I learned a lifelong lesson. So I want to share the same blessings with all of you. So I recommend you this message. For our Sunday worship service message. So announcement number one. Let us learn a lifelong lesson from Pastor Moses. Nothing can be a problem when the message of Christ or the word of Christ dwells in us richly. Pastor Moses memorized 3,000 verses of the Bible for the last eight months. It means about 12 verses a day. So let us follow his good example. Let us start to memorize one verse such as daily bread keepers. I also had a wonderful and mysterious ex experience by memorizing meditating daily bread keepers. It was about 38 years ago. I and Mr. Isaac was, were working at Taco Bell in Westwood in front of UCLA. My job started about 8 a.m. I went to the Taco Bell and cooked about 100 pounds of beans and 100 pounds of ground beef. From about 11 a.m., I was put to a cashier's position. I had to memorize all the price of items. Bean burrito, 199. Beef burrito, 120, so on and so forth. My cashier's position lasted until about 2 p.m. And then from 2 p.m., I had to wash all the dishes and things like that. So even I wet my panties. And around that time, I was called to Korea to marry Maria. Now the life was tough. I was not able to listen or speak English properly. Job was tough. I worked like a frontline soldiers. I worked so hard. My cashier's, my cashier's job was faster than all the other cashiers, about 1.5 times. When I first did all these kind of uh, works, Around the 1 to 3 p.m., I became tired and even a little bit dizzy. So I thought about what should I do? So I decided to meditate daily bread births. So all the time my hand touched the 10 keys for the price and work, my mind meditate on daily bread keepers. Then mysterious things happened. Around the 3 p.m., I find cool stream, living stream flows from my heart. It starts around here and then it spreads to my whole body it's a cool streaming. I think it's the streaming of the Holy Spirit. And then I was not even tired, mysteriously. Physically, I was not tired. Another amazing thing is the assistant manager, who was not a believer at all, noticed how I was so refreshed. Usually, they call on new people about eight hours of working because the new people have uh, more strength. After eight, uh, eight hours of working, a uh, people becomes tired, right? So they replace it. But after this assistant manager noticed, 
I was even refreshed than the newcomer. He asked me to work overtime, canceling the people who were supposed to come to replace my place. Mysterious expression. I know, and you know, when the word of Christ dwells in our hearts richly, nothing can be problems. Raising up disciples, perfectly possible because God will enable us to do so. Preaching the word possible. To get all A's in your classes, possible. By the empowering of the word of Christ. So, I want to encourage for each one of you to start as much you can do. You can sp spend about two minutes and memorize daily bread keywords each day. And you can start from there and do as much as you can. <coughs> this year, our LA UBF goal is to preach the word in 3,000 one to one Bible studies. This is also possible at 300 one to one Bible studies. Sorry. It's possible through the empowering of the word of Christ. And all other challenges in our lives, health issues, children issues, financial issues, cannot be problems at all when the word of Christ dwell richly dwell in our hearts richly. So let's learn a lifelong lesson from him and follow his good example. You know, as a general director of UBF ministry, his cross is the heaviest one, especially because of pandemic. Also, there is a arguably most challenging thing he needed to take care of last year. And he did such a wonderful job and I was, and I listened to his message. I realized why he could do it so wonderfully. It is because the word of Christ dwells in his heart richly. So why don't he learn a lifelong lesson from him and be prosperous? Psalm chapter one says, "Whatever he does, prospers." The ultimate prosperity from God belong to all who meditate the law of the Lord day and night. They are like trees planted by the streams of living waters. Drought may come, troubles may come, but they never wither. Whatever he or she does prospers such an ultimate blessing and empowerment. The stream of the Holy Spirit are all ours. As we meditate the word of Christ in our hearts and make it dwell richly in our hearts. Okay? You promise. Right? Second Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus will judge the living and the dead and in view of his appearing and his kingdom I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. So let's pray for 300 one to one Bible studies this year. Group Bible studies. You can pray the Lord may open opportunities for you to share the word of God, even in a casual talking. Or you can pray to assign one hour to listen to any person. This is direction, but we need empowerment from the Lord. 
that empowerment comes from the Lord when we make the word of Christ dwell in our hearts richly. Next week's messenger is William Larson. We start the first Kings. We enjoy the letters, all the scripture letters, half part is doctrine, and another half part is practice. But there was a suggestion that we want to study scriptures of many stories. Stories are wonderful. We know the greatest story ever told, the story of Jesus Christ. And we chose to study the first kings because first kings are full of stories. They're all related in some aspects to the greatest story ever told, the story of Jesus Christ. So we'll start the first kings from next week. William Larson has a, such a privilege to be the first messenger by God's divine appointment. We didn't plan up, but it turned that way. So we we'll listen to his message and pray for him. There could have been many other prayer topics, but these are three important prayer topics. Let's learn a lifelong lesson from Pastor Moses, preach the word, and Pray for William Larson. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for teaching us a lifelong lesson from Pastor Moses. Father, you taught us nothing can be a problem when the word of Christ dwells in our hearts richly. Father, may you bless each of us to learn a lifelong lesson by meditating and memorizing the word of Christ and message of Christ each day and even moment by moment. So that you may empower us to preach the word. So that you may empower us to overcome all our problems. Virus problems, health problems, financial problems, children problems, well, whatsoever problems. And be victorious and be an overcomer. Father, may you bless us to preach the word. 300 one Bible studies this year. May you bless us to pray that you may open our opportunities to preach the word. And pray for at least one person Father we pray for William Larson you may bless our Bible studies from first Kings from next week you may speak to us personally your word may dwell in us richly as we study the words of you from first Kings from next week I thank you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So that will complete today's worship service. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending today, uh, either here in person or online. And we'll see everyone next week for uh, William's message, uh, first message on First Kings. Thank you.